Hi, I'm Bernal Cox with Live Young Lifestyle, and today I'm here with L. Russ, who is the author of The Paleo Thyroid Solution. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm so glad to be here. I am actually obsessed with your book. I have read it cover to cover. I've got dog ears. It is highlighted. And the reason why I love this book is because you did not take no for an answer. And I think with our health, we have to be proactive. So tell me a little bit about your story with your thyroid, because isn't thyroid one of the most underdiagnosed problems that we're facing today in America? Yeah, it's really an epidemic. So 200 million people worldwide have it plus. We know at least 25 million Americans have it. It's the number one prescription in America. And then 60% are undiagnosed. Right. So if we know that for sure, there's many more. Or untreated, meaning they get to the doctor, but they're mistreated by the mismanagement of either the dosage or the type of hormones, etc. You know, tests that were developed for thyroid, like 1973, if you have a doctor that graduated in the 80s and they haven't really kept up on the latest, right. then they are going to be out of date. So they're currently uninformed. The ones that are up on it often are out of network, often cost a lot of money. We're talking about the functional medicine doctors, the DOs. Sometimes they don't take insurance, so that's a tricky business. So when, when doctors are testing for thyroid, yeah. like if you go to your general doctor the right test that they're they're doing which is a general thyroid panel it's testing for what more often than not they're just testing the TSH okay or TSH and free T4 both of which will not get you the answer now by okay. the way unfortunately endocrinologists who are supposed to be the experts are the most uninformed in this arena they happen to have a little bit higher of the ego I'm not ripping on all endocrinologists but I'm saying people go to the endocrinologist thinking that they're going to be the experts right. and oftentimes they're exactly the opposite so you've got to be careful because there's been people that have suffered there's a, a success story in my book suffered with two miscarriages 10 years of suffering who wow. only when we looked back her endocrinologist only tested her for TSH and T4 so I'll just rattle off right now so everyone without even having to read my book knows you need to get TSH free T3, free T4, reverse T3, and then you need to get two thyroid antibodies for Hashimoto's to rule that out. One is called TPO and the other is called TG. I'm not sure if it'll be helpful, but it probably will be for me to describe how this whole thyroid works and what these yeah, numbers are. Yeah, I think that that's probably a good idea. So yes. we just went over her results before we talked and she is hypothyroid based on her labs, yet she's on thyroid hormones. So this is the thing, just because a doctor gave you thyroid hormones does not mean that you're not still hypothyroid, okay? Yes. so. The, the important part that I can impart to everybody is, the lesson here is you don't just take a pill from a doctor. Someone diagnosed you with something, you get into it, get into mm -hmm. it, learn this yourself. You might even know more than your doctor, you might be able to advocate for yourself better, or the great doctor you're with might retire, then what are you gonna do? Knowledge is everything. It's the only reason I got better was because I knew. And I wanna just throw out there, so we're in Beverly Hills right now, and we are in the land of doctors, okay? We are in the land of celebrity hormone throw doctors. Stone, throw a stone yeah. and you'll hit a doctor. You're gonna right? hit an anti-aging yeah. doctor. <laughs> but, <laughs> but here's the thing, I went to over 50 in Los Angeles, and I still could not get the answers that I wanted. So why am I an expert who doesn't have a medical mm -hmm. degree? It's because I actually ended up being my own doctor and solving my own bouts of hypothyroidism twice in 10 years. I do have a doctor on my book to confirm everything that I right. say to legitimize it, but what do you do if you're in the middle of Missouri? What yeah. do you do if we're in LA and she's getting tested wrong and I was misdiagnosed and suffering for two years, what are you gonna do? So you have to be proactive. Even when I finally did have somebody test everything, they test the free G3, they tested everything that they were supposed to be testing and they said, you're hypothyroid. I went and took that test back to my family doctor and my family doctor disagreed with that and said, you, I don't think, no, you can still see that this TSH is still within normal, that it's fine. And it just, it didn't make any sense to me. So why mm -hmm. would we, if, if people are only relying on that TSH and that TSH is in, within the normal range, which that's what your general doctor is gonna test you for, Explain to us how that pituitary gland gives us a false reading sometimes and we could stay sick for a very long time. Yeah, everybody listening and watching who has a doctor who is assessing your thyroid status based on your TSH result is a doctor that is uninformed and you must run. You must go to another doctor. This is run. really 
borderline malpractice at this point. Let me explain how the thyroid works. So the thyroid gland is at the base of your neck and it is essentially the master gland. It's, an, it's responsible for your heart rate, your metabolism. No fat is burned without it, which is why a lot of hypo people go down the road of gaining lots of weight. It is in charge of the production and regulation of all of your sex hormones in your body. So let's say you have peace, you got misdiagnosed like I did with polycystic ovarian syndrome or you have fibroids or you think you've got some hormonal issue, you go right back to the thyroid. If you're depressed, anything mental, brain, depression, you go right to the thyroid. Oh, your cholesterol is Because it off. is like the master. It's the master. Yeah. It's responsible for everything. And so, again, this is why we get cold when we're hypothyroid. It's the thermostat for our heat, our heart rate, everything. Let me just say how important it is. If you're on a stranded island and you had no thyroid gland because it was removed, you know, at some point because of thyroid cancer, you're dead, okay? You cannot live without thyroid hormones. So how do you think your life's gonna be with levels of subpar? You're slowly dying. Right. It's accelerated glycation and aging. You're gonna get right. insulin resistance, then you're mm -hmm. gonna get this, then you're gonna get that. It's gonna domino effect. So let me explain this system and how it relates to tests so people are okay. out there and they can really understand what these results mean. So basically what happens is we've got a pituitary gland at the base of our brain. And okay. you can just imagine it like a sensor. And whenever your blood gets low in thyroid hormones, it will send a signal yeah. to the thyroid called the TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. Now, TSH and that test is not a thyroid hormone. It's a pituitary hormone. It is not the judge of thyroid, okay? Right. That's just the signal. When the signal sent to the thyroid, the thyroid, when it works properly, has pretty much one job. It outputs some T4 and it outputs mm -hmm. some T3. Now, what's really important to understand is that the only biologically active thyroid hormone on planet Earth in our body is T3. Now, what's T4? T4 is a storage hormone. And the reason it's there and we have this elegant system of converting is because mm -hmm. T3 is so powerful. It's so potent that you can look at T4 as kind of a slow release, right? It stores right. it up. When you need it, it converts. The problem is though, is that when doctors are only testing the TSH and the T4, they're not testing the thing of which it's supposed to convert to that matters. Mm -hmm. They're not testing the thing that matters. Free T3 results always correspond with how one is feeling. Mm -hmm. Now. In our American range, Canadian ranges are different. In our American standard range, a free T3 result is between about 2.0 and 4.0 or 2.2 and 4.2. Right now, yours is at 2.7, that's below the range. That is low for someone on thyroid hormone replacement and is low in general. It's a very hypothyroid result. Most normal people who don't have any thyroid problems, they're about mid-range, 3.1. Right. Now, the mistake you get in was doctors trying to target this and you don't want to try to target the mid-range. I'm just letting everyone know that if you are below the mid-range and you are feeling symptoms, you're not crazy. And right. it's really the free T3 result. T3 is so powerful that if you were to Google it right now, if you were just Google Cytomel or Lyothyronine Sodium, about 20 million bodybuilding websites will come up. And you'll be like, what's this about? And I'll tell you what it's about. It's because bodybuilders, and not that this is a smart thing that they do, but when they have to burn as much fat as humanly possible before right. a competition, they will jam themselves, take over the thyroid, put a ton so of three... So it just shreds them out. So it just shreds them out. It's not a, that, we're not advising that. This no, is it's, about, that's very This is nothing. about health, but it does explain yeah. why that's right. if your thyroid is hypothyroid, you might have gained weight recently, oh. or you might not be able to take that weight off. It might be more difficult. And we might blame that on our age or our slowing of metabolism. It is the slowing of metabolism, it is. which is regulated by the thyroid. So let's just quickly go over some of the symptoms. Mm -hmm. I can tell you all mine. There's a lot. I, got a, I got a lot. And I was in denial of, of, about them for a long time because I didn't want to be somebody that took medication. But you, you need to be healthy. And when I realized, especially after reading your book, that if your thyroid is not good, because it regulates the metabolic process of every organ in your body, um, that it could lead to heart disease, it could lead to osteoporosis, it could yes. lead to a lot of things. It's that important. A lot of people express what you do. I don't wanna go on medication. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that it's really not medication. Medication is like the birth control pill, which I am against, which is something that not morally, just against it for what it is right. in the body, because it manipulates your system in a way it's not supposed to work. Right. Thyroid hormones are giving you what you're missing, and I want people to understand that. Mm -hmm. So if you need them, you need them. The other thing too is how you long are them. you gonna go without them and let things go wrong because how are you gonna repair these things over here without proper thyroid status? Wound healing. 
just cutting yourself and not having a wound heal is something related to yeah. hypothyroidism. Um, even healing one's adrenals, you need T3 to work with the adrenals to heal it. So, yeah. so again, thyroid so status is... at the is, root of the problem. And so the root is almost always this. It yeah. really is, yeah. So if you're having any sort of uh, discomfort that doesn't seem to be alleviated by what your doctor is prescribing you, um, you really do need to have your thyroid tested. And especially if you're a sugar burner, I think, any, I think everybody, if you've got insurance, go into your doctor and just say, I want a comprehensive thyroid test because you could be spending money treating your gut and treating different things and treating vitamin Ds and taking supplements when it could be that you're, you're, you're missing the root of the problem. Well, your body's not ever holding on to those things you're taking anyway, right. so what a waste, and then you're just peeing right. them out. And anyone can go to my website. I have a th free thyroid guide. What is your website? It's lrust.com, and you can go download a free thyroid guide. You don't even need to buy my book. It tells you every test you need to go, where to find a doctor in your state or your country. That's I spent good. so much money of my own wasted on these doctors, you know, all over yeah. town. Like, like me with wrinkle cream. Yeah, just spending all, <laughs> like, or, no, or me with like, hair products, like all the money I've spent, you know, so I'm about get, get to A to Z as fast yes. as possible. Let's not stay undiagnosed for years like I was and have a whole host of things. So let's talk about the symptoms so that people that are watching this video, they, they know to go to their doctor and we don't want them to, you know, mm -hmm. be sick longer than they need to. So I'll tell you about my symptoms. First of all, feel my hands. I mean, my hands are always cold and my feet are always cold. Um, and so that for me is an indication that I know that my thyroid medicine isn't right right now. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the other symptoms? Temperature is a huge thing. So any kind, of, you're, you know if you're always the coldest person when I'm you shouldn't be, right? You know, person. I mean, so you're always cold or you're the one that's like, oh, it's cold in here and no one else is. That's the thing. You can have some cold hands and cold feet. It's are you feeling chilled mm -hmm. and cold? The other is really um, any kind of infertility issues or any kind of gynecological issues when it comes to women. So if you've had miscarriages, you can't get pregnant or you're having weird periods, heavy periods, wow. fibroids, ovarian cysts, anything gynecologically go immediately and get this checked. That's okay. anything. There are people that have suffered for years having miscarriages, migraines is another one. People just think they're a migraine sufferer. That is not the wow. case. Migraines and headaches are absolutely uh, related to this. People have suffered with migraines for 10 years brutally and then they get their thyroid fixed and they almost can't believe it because they're yeah. gone forever and they right. had identified as a person. So there's one. Any kind of... Um, uncontrollable weight gain or inability to lose weight, hair falling out, curly hair becoming not curly, uh, thinning of eyebrows. Essentially, you wake up and you have puffy eyes and puffy face or if you feel like you really need to de-bloat a lot. Um, any kind of feeling of bloated yeah, or gut to, issues. Yeah, if you feel like, one of my Yeah, if you feel like you're getting a tire around your waist, that is usually related to the fact that your thyroid's got low, you don't have thyroid hormones, and when that happens, the adrenals take over because they're like, we need to get this girl out of bed, mm -hmm. we need to get her going because she doesn't have energy. Right. So then your adrenals overexhaust, they overproduce cortisol, now you've got a fat t tire right. around your tummy, and then you go to work out because you're gaining weight, and now you're exhausting the adrenals, so you go down this, mm -hmm. this hole. So those are some of the main symptoms. Other things can be inner itching in the ears um that you can't scratch that you like, like something is like in your ear and you can't like get yeah, to it or weird ear stuff any kind of vision issues there are there are a million uh dry cracked skin cracked heels what i do have before i started any medication at all my hands and feet were always cold um i would i just didn't feel like i had the energy that i used to have mm -hmm. i've always had low iron I've always had low D, and I was thinking it's because I'm an anti-aging consultant and I never see the sun, <laughs> um, because the sun is the number one thing that ages your skin. So I was trying to band-aid all of these different problems without somebody telling me your thyroid's messed up. So you can't hold on to nutrients, whether you're, you could eat all the liver you want, you're not going to actually absorb the iron if you're mm -hmm. hypothyroid, and let me explain why. So hypothyroid, low right? So low temperature, low energy, sludgy, sludgy. Hyperthyroidism, too much. Skinny, pooping all the time, heart rate concerning, right. heart attack, not a good thing either. Sweaty. Right. So it's, it's excess. And this is really a Goldilocks game. So hypo, things get low, 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 and then they're sluggish and they're nowhere. Part of your book is all about, well, the first half of the book is about the thyroid, um, which is in, in, an incredible piece of information. Like you go into a lot of detail, but I think the main thing I grabbed from that is that it's way underdiagnosed and symptoms that I didn't realize were thyroid related, like the hair falling out and the, and the excess weight and, 
and things like that. And temperature, like even body temperature. My body temperature never gets over 97.6. I never hit 98, ever. And everyone that should be 98.6. That just is a <laughs> sign that my thyroid is not, is not working properly. Yeah. So those kind of things that I was unaware of that were related to thyroid mm -hmm. um, became a lot more apparent. But the second half of the book talks about how diet, um, and especially a paleo primal diet, can help fix some of these problems. So tell me a little bit more about the paleo primal diet, because there's a lot of misconceptions about that. Yeah, a lot of misconceptions, and one of those starts with the fact that it's just a diet. This is what paleo primal is. First of all, as humans, we have our own set of DNA, right? We have a DNA blueprint that defines how we look and defines what we're supposed to eat. What so, we're supposed to eat. Right, so a cow has four stomachs. It can graze on grass, which we can't because we can't handle cellulose. You never feed a steak to a horse. That's not what they're meant to eat. So it's about aligning our DNA with our lifestyle and diet. Now, we are really primarily hunter-gatherers. And that is fish, fowl, nuts, seeds, legumes. I mean, mm -hmm. it is a, a void of uh, grains, legumes, and dairy for the most part. In the paleo primal world, there's a little bit of an argument on dairy. Some people say full fat dairy, like heavy whipping cream or butter is okay because it's got less casein in it versus the milks and things like that. But in general, it's a grain-free, legume-free, and dairy-free lifestyle. Now just explain legumes for one second just because sure. some people are Legumes like, are what? beans, legumes yeah, are so beans. Now green beans might not really count. That's kind of a vegetable or right. whatever. We're right. not going to be- black beans, pinto beans, any sort of bean any kind of a beans. legume. And aren't also peanuts in some- Peanuts are kind of considered a kind of legume of as well. So if you've got any um, autoimmune issues or any kind of thing that you're looking to solve, particularly which is related to gut, you want to cut out things that are high in lectins. And those things are high in lectins. They're just anti-nutrients and so are grains. So basically paleo primal, it is a food list, but it's more than that. It's about getting one switched over to be primarily fueled on fat versus glucose. So okay. we call that being a fat burner. So what does it mean to be a fat burner? Um, well, how do you know if you're the opposite, which is a sugar burner? You know if you're a sugar burner if you cannot take a five-hour flight and not, not eat. eat. If yeah. you can't go right now, if you just ate a meal and then afterwards you cannot go 8 to 12 to 24 hours without eating and not have a hangry meltdown, lapse in energy, get all ticked off, mm -hmm. feel tired, you're a sugar burner. Now, most people listening will be like, I can't go the next 12 hours without eating. Yeah. I can, and yeah. I'll be on fire in my brain, and it's only because I've switch this metabolic machinery to behave in the way that it's supposed to. Why does this all matter? Because when we go paleo primal and we become to be a fat burner, blood glucose is steady and okay. adrenals are steady. And here's the big connection with the thyroid. So every time, let's say you're eating every two, three hours, you're doing the zone. Every four hours, every two, three hours, you're like, oh my God, I need a snack. Mm -hmm. Your blood glucose drops. When it drops, the cortisol does not like it and it responds. Right. When that cortisol responds, you're getting fat around your middle, you're catabolizing the muscles you just worked so hard at the gym to gain, and you're antagonistic to testosterone and thyroid and everything else. So you're taking like eight steps backwards. When you are fat adapted, you keep those stores where they are and you're good to go. You don't need, that's why you're steady. The people use paleo primal for anxiety. Psychologists use it with their patients for mood. Uh, my brain felt starving, I'm tired, I'm cranky. Right. All of these things, that is not normal. But when people eat those Pringles. Once you pop, the fun don't stop. So when I eat a thing, I feel better. Hey, same yeah. thing goes with heroin. It's when a you're vicious away, cycle. Yeah, I mean, you can also yeah. take some heroin, you're gonna feel better. We're not saying Pringles or heroin, but they're close. Right. <laughs> So it's really, people misunderstand, and I really would love people to get into and learn more about this, because you can just go for a paleo food list and do it wrong. Yes, do you know what I mean? Not, it's not a high protein. It's actually a moderate protein. It's high fat, moderate protein, low carb. And what does that mean? Anyone listening right now, if you want to just be like, what am I... How many grams of carbs are you eating per day? For people our mm -hmm. size that are women, you're looking at like 100, 100 grams total. 100. Or, you know, and you can, you have a big day, you take a five mile hike, go up. It's, it's, it's not right. strict, but. Mm. But you're also, you have to choose your carbs wisely. So you, carbs you really do. doesn't mean you're sitting down with a peanut butter sandwich. That's no. not, but you're choosing, you're, you're having the carbs that are on the list. So fresh vegetables and fruits. And there are even some vegetables that are higher in sugar, like sweet potatoes, that you, you can still eat, but you right. want to eat them moderately. Well, and we consider those tubers, and we consider tubers, which have only really been around 6,000 years, to be somewhat paleo, but they're kind of an occasional thing. What is the fat to protein to carb ratio in a given meal? 
at first you want to start to count your macros if you don't know how many carbs are in things just to see what you're doing. And then okay. it kind of becomes a little bit intuitive. Do you know what I mean? Because you might not, I try to push people away from feeling that they have to eat the rainbow in every meal. Sometimes it's okay to just eat a steak by itself and not with vegetables. You know, okay. sometimes it's okay to have half an avocado with salt, walk out the door, that's your breakfast. There's nothing, you don't have to fit every food group in every meal. And I think yeah. that that's a stressful thing for people. But at first, We as kind of think of meals of like those cafeteria place where they right. all had like the little dividers and everybody, you know. And I like to look at like, how's your day and how's your week? Because right. we do often overeat protein. That was my big problem. I was an over protein eater, like 120 grams a day. That's like enough for a big dude. I had to really kind of piecemeal it down. And now I can't really finish a whole steak, like a huge, you know, steak, yeah. but before I could polish it away. When we overeat protein, it turns into glucose, which is a wonderful right. mechanism for our hunter-gathering ancestors who only yeah. had animals and their fat nearby, didn't have anything else for weeks and weeks. They're overeating the protein, it's going through gluconeogenesis, and it's like this little slow release mechanism. Mm -hmm. And also our bodies will make glucose each day. The truth is that no human being ever has to eat a carb for the rest of their life, but you cannot live without protein and fat. That says everything that you need does. to know. That Look does. at all of our type 2 diabetes commercials on television. This is an epidemic. It's for a reason because our government food pyramid says to eat 6 to 11 servings of grains a day plus two to four servings of fruit. That is a diabetic making diet. Yeah, it's crazy. And that's the thing. You want your insulin steady because you don't want to keep throwing rocks at the pancreas. So let's. here's a perfect example of skinny fat. It's the athlete. All the athletes are getting type 2 diabetes now because you know they're carbon up before the run, they go burn it, then they carb up later. They look like the pillar of health. They're beautiful. They actually feel good, but then they go get tested and they're pre-diabetic. And they're like, how did this happen? Right. So the thing is, is that even though you think you're quote, visually getting away with it, mm -hmm. you're not on the back end. Yeah. And it's gonna get tapped out. You keep messing with an organ like that, now, insulin is very important. It's an incredible storage hormone, but basically the longevity in all living things have the lowest amount of insulin output. So we don't want to keep tapping that. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that makes sense. There's a lot to this, and anyone can go to the primalblueprint.com um, and, 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 or Primal Blueprint web, you know, okay. our podcast and listen to some podcasts and go, okay, free videos, look at the food list. You can start there. But, but also from like an anthropological standpoint, oh, like we weren't, yes. we weren't, feeding ourselves every two or three hours because there wasn't food like that. So we were we weren't walking eating. around, we were yeah. killing stuff, we were cooking it, we were gathering a few seeds or fruit when we found it. There's a great book called The Paleo Manifesto by a Yale paleontologist and he studied you know, the remains and this is what they do. And right. you have a 60,000 year old hunter-gatherer ancestor, skull fully intact, perfect jaw, perfectly straight teeth and high stature. Then when we get into finding farmers' skulls from you know around 10,000 years ago when we started domesticating animals and stopped right. wandering, we started to eat things we shouldn't have, you can see the corrosion in the skull and the teeth. And so basically 10,000 years ago we got grains and this is a very important fact. Paleontologists never saw rheumatoid arthritis on the archeological wow. record ever until grains came on the scene. And in my right. book, I make a, another little leap, which is the first recorded uh, instances of thyroid issues back in China many, many years ago. Coincidentally enough, the emperor at the time was emperor five grains. Now, we know for sure that grains are not great for human consumption, but particularly with thyroid, especially with gluten. But regardless, gluten and autoimmune diseases go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So if you've got rheumatoid arthritis, you're going to want to go strict paleo, probably autoimmune protocol. There's different levels. You can go paleo keto, be super low carb. You can just do general paleo primal. Clean out your diet. Get rid of these horrible inflammatory right. seed oils like canola. Clean all this stuff out. You give your, your body the chance to get back to the primordial baseline in mm -hmm. order to resolve these things. But what really comes in hand in hand in thyroid is the fact that your blood glucose gets steady and therefore the adrenals yeah. aren't all wonky. And it's the hormonal response is when we're not eating is when the good stuff's happening. Mm -hmm. I, you know, all of the FDA just completely screws us up yeah. because, yeah. you know, starting with that bullshit pyramid that they did, yeah. um, I went yeah. vegetarian for a while. I went vegan for a little bit and I did not feel well at all. And that's not for everybody, but because there is an ethical um, part, uh, you know, component to that. There's a lot of people that don't want to eat meat. But how can you, is there a way to have this paleo primal um, kind of lifestyle and still be vegetarian or be vegan? Is there a way to do that? Yeah, you know, I do want to say this. So being a vegetarian or vegan is obviously a choice and there's no, nothing wrong with that. 
but just know that you are making the decision to go against your DNA and that problems could come up and you gotta right. be careful, you gotta get the amino acids. Listen, I, I, I had a vegan in my sauna at the gym almost pass out the other day. She was swimming, couldn't catch her breath. She came in running to the sauna like an almost an emergency. And I knew she was a vegan from before and I looked at her and I said, when's the last time you took B12? Yeah. Turns out that was the only thing. Like weeks later she came back, she's like, oh my, thank you so much. So you have to be careful. Yeah. So you gotta know you're making that choice. Now you can be, but it would be hard to be a vegan uh, primal. You could sort of do it. You'd have to be really high fat. You could that be a pescatarian. Pescatarian would be great, or if you can eat eggs, or if, even if you don't eat eggs or fish, if you're open to whey protein powder or some bovine collagen or something that won't taste like meat or have the texture of meat but still might be getting right. you those nutrients, um, that would be a way to do it. Well, speaking of like the yeah. eggs thing, because the one thing that I, that I read in your book as well was, um, you know, I always did like the cage-free eggs. Pastured. That's such... BS. It's obvious. They're, they're still getting fed stuff that was not intended for their DNA. So if mm -hmm. we're trying to stick with our DNA blueprint and we're eating animals that we're that we're raising on farms that are not sticking with their DNA blueprint, it still is a way that's going to wreak havoc on our bodies. So now mm -hmm. I've changed to pasture raised. Yeah, so they're, they're a little bit more expensive, but the thing is, is expensive. that we do want to eat things that are also eating their native diet. Yeah. So when people, when you look at a label and it says no antibiotics ever, and someone would go, well, why would there ever even be antibiotics? This is why because when they have the cows that are fed grains to fatten them up at the side of the freeway and there's no grass and it looks all muddy and disgusting and you hear mooing and it smells mm -hmm. and you're like driving by, those are the industrial cow feedlots that are messing with the environment. And they're fed grains. They're fed grains. So what happens? Cows not supposed to eat grains. That's right. So they fart a lot and then it goes up into the air yeah. and then the environmentalists go, we got to stop eating meat. Has nothing to do with that. You're just not eating the right type of meat. Right. Okay. Because that meat's bad for the environment too. So here's the thing. So they're eating grains. It's not their native diet. They get sick. Now the ranchers have to give them antibiotics. That's why that's on the label. Yeah. So you, when you go to pastured farms like uh, Primal Pastures in California, their animals don't get sick because they have immune systems. Right. And they're being pastured and they're roaming and eating the grass of which that is their diet. But there is a way to do this if you're a pescatarian or if you, if you eat eggs. 100%. This is, you don't not you have do to eat red meat. you do it with nut butters and Absolutely. things like that? You just have to be very careful about your, your vitamin intake. You are responsible for mouth to anus. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Your doctor can't be there for you and feed you. That's one part that you can do. So El, there's so much to cover on this subject. So tell my viewers how we can get a hold of you so we can find out more information. Sure. You can just go to lrust.com. You can download a free thyroid guide, which will give you everything you need to go to get on the right path. And then you can also hear me every Monday on the Primal Blueprint podcast, where we talk about paleo primal health, mind, body, and you know, all of these things as well. And again, anyone who's interested in this, just Google paleo primal food list and go to the primalblueprint.com and just take a look and Mm -hmm. Start to investigate. Where can I clean out my pantry? Where can I start? Right. Yeah. Clean out your pantry. That's a good place to start. We'll throw, throw it away. away those grains. So finding that connection between the food we put in our body and our overall health, that's a really good way to live young. Check out this book. Mm -hmm.